Today we're blending Pop-Tarts into our kombucha to see if that flavor comes through in the bottle. And why? Well, if the flavor of this pastry can come through in the kombucha cleanly and clearly, if we can get the distillation of Pop-Tart essence, then this could apply to other pastries as well. Cinnamon roll, a blueberry muffin, mom's apple pie, a Twinkie. We could greatly expand upon what we're capable of making in kombucha. and We can do it all with half a Pop-Tart. But first things first, we need to toast these. And I actually kind of want to toast these quite a bit. I think that's going to add a lot of dimension and depth to the pastry and the sugar. So I'm not going to burn them, but if anyone's passing by the toaster, I think I would want them to be a little bit nervous, if that makes sense. So today I've got a frosted strawberry and a brown sugar cinnamon, which, if I remember being 12 correctly, is the best. Now we could just mash this into the bottle, but we want to try and get as much of this flavor out as we can. And the more surface area that we expose to the kombucha, the more flavor we're going to steep out of it. So I think blending is the way to go. However, this leads us to our first real problem, because I don't think we're going to want a bunch of pastry mush into our bottle. So we're going to use what's called a three-stage fermentation. Typically, we brew kombucha in two stages. In our first step, we turn black tea into kombucha, and then in the second stage, we typically flavor and bottle it together. However, with the three stage, we split that last step apart. We flavor it in the refrigerator, we strain it, and then we carbonate at room temperature. So it does take more time, and it's never my plan A because of that, but it is a helpful tool to have, especially if you don't have a juicer. If you're using a puree, your carbonation is almost certainly gonna blow out the bottle. So if you don't have a juicer, a three-stage fermentation might be something you wanna try out. Our Pop-Tarts are ready, and I'm gonna add 60 grams of our Pop-Tart. That should give us about 19 grams of sugar. Not all of that is going to be imparted into the kombucha, so it might not be that sweet in the end, but we're going to have a chance to taste and readjust later on. And since there's not an even distribution of sugar, I'm just going to try and be as fair as I can be. I may have miscalculated how much a Pop-Tart weighs. It looks like I'm going to need about one and a fourth tarts, so uh, give me a minute here. 60 grams. It doesn't have a very distinct flavor beyond sugar. I like the crispiness of the frosting on top. The pastry is just kind of dry without any sort of, not to be mean, but like flavor or depth. Oh, well. To this, I'm just going to add a little bit of kombucha, enough to blend. Kind of smells like animal crackers and distant berries. There's so many bubbles and so much sediment that it's kind of hard to tell where the line is. That's bottle number one. For bottle number two, we're again going with 60 grams of Pop-Tart, which should still be about 19 grams of sugar. Still far and away the best. Uh, sour animal crackers and cinnamon this time. Enough to make a person suspect that this won't taste great. And that's bottle number two. These I'm just going to let sit in the refrigerator for three days. Then we're going to strain them thoroughly, top them off, and adjust the sugar a little bit if they need it. There is one other problem we need to worry about though, and that's rancidity, where the oils and fats degrade and they produce off flavors. Heat, light, moist air, they can all make that process happen faster, and these bottles are gonna have a bit of all three. And since these Pop-Tarts have quite a bit of fat in them, it does present a bit of a worry, but since the rancidity that we're risking isn't really harmful to humans, it's just gonna produce a very disagreeable flavor, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Also, in our Thanksgiving episode, we made a pecan pie that used real pecans. And the finished bottle had some big droplets of oil all the way throughout it, and we still didn't run into any issue. So I'm not too worried about that. And then finally, there is a preservative in the Pop-Tarts for the oil, but I think our yeast will be able to power through it. So uh, we'll check back in here in three days. Three days have passed, and I think we'll have gotten all the flavor we're going to get out of it, so... I think it's ready to strain. And I've got a fine knit oat milk bag here to help strain it. And as you can see, it's separated into three distinct layers. It seems to be brown grit on top, clear kombucha in the middle, and then just a mixture of sludges there at the bottom. 
And hopefully this doesn't explode. That didn't care. It looks very much like a strawberry milkshake. It smells like sourdough. Somehow in not a terrible way. This is a much slower process than I expected. And if you're wondering why we couldn't just do a regular two-stage fermentation and then just go straight to straining like this, it would kind of kill all of our carbonation. So I think it's worth the extra three days. All right, we're going to call that good. It's thick. It's pink. It's not especially appetizing looking. It tastes exactly like a strawberry Pop-Tart. It somehow tastes more like a strawberry Pop-Tart than the strawberry Pop-Tart did. It tastes like the pastry, tastes like the sugar, tastes like the sprinkles on top. That was entirely unexpected. All right. And it's kind of the exact sweetness I would want too, because with these Pop-Tarts, I'm thinking the brown sugar cinnamon should be so sweet that it masks the acidity. But with the strawberry Pop-Tart, I think I wanted some of that acidity to shine through uh, to highlight that sour note of uh, normally the strawberry, but in this case, the citric acid that's in the Pop-Tart. So I kind of like it exactly this level, but we're going to add a little bit more kombucha because we want it to have a full bottle. This is just plain kombucha that I'm going to add to it. And then we'll add a little bit of sugar to make sure that it's just a touch too sweet. So in this case, I have to add about 75 milliliters extra of kombucha. It is very thick though. Uh, it's a little too sour, so I'm going to add four grams of sugar. I bet the yeast are going to love this. Yeah, too sweet. I think we're good. So that is our strawberry Pop-Tart kombucha. Next up, we've got our brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tart, which also has its own three layers. Ooh, except this one's gray sludge. It smells exactly like the Pop-Tart did. I think I need a better way for this part of the process though, because uh, this is like 10 minutes of waiting. Perhaps not the most appetizing kombucha we've ever made, but uh, I think we've also made worse. It's 100% accurate to this Pop-Tart. It's not even just like a cinnamon roll. It's specifically a brown sugar frosted Pop-Tart but it is too sour. This time I'm going to start with about seven grams of sugar. I'm going to add another two. I think it's really the tanginess of it. It's a little less sharp. It's a little closer to the actual pastry. So like before, these are going to get another three days, this time at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll cool them down and they should be ready to taste. The day is finally here, and it uh, looks like the bottle settled down to a single layer of slimy pastry mush. So I think we're ready to taste. Not at all the color I would have expected. Still smells like sourdough bread with kombucha. It no longer really tastes like a Pop-Tart kind of just tastes like a slightly more sour, very rich, creamy cream soda. There's like a pop of tart berry fruit, and then there's a lot of cream. There's a hint of baked pastry. It's much lighter and thinner than it was before, but it's missing that distinct Pop-Tart taste. And I'm wondering if all of that flavor there is buried in that bottom sludge. So I'm going to mix this up and see if that's any different. Let's see what we got. Much thicker, much more pink. 
it's got a much stronger strawberry pop tart aroma. The taste and the mouthfeel are the same, but uh, with that extra aroma of the strawberry pop tart, whatever unique combination of aromas that is, uh, this really completes it, really rounds it out. This takes it back to where it was before, where it's distinctly a strawberry pop tart. It still feels light and refreshing. It still has that strong pop of berry tartness. It's got the creaminess. It's got that baked pastry note. This is a pop tart in a glass. So, so weird. I don't know why I would ever want it, but uh, I'm glad I can get it. Let's try that enough. Next up is our brown sugar cinnamon. I'm just going to pour a little off here just to make sure that it looks the same. And it does. It's uh, weirdly white. And it smells extremely strongly of brown sugar cinnamon pop tart. This one just kind of came out as a thick yellow white sludge. And it smells exactly the same as the pop tart. It's too sweet. It's extremely sweet but then there's still that acidity of the kombucha. It wasn't fully hidden. Even this large amount of sugar was not enough to hide all that acidity. The brown sugar, the cinnamon, the pastry, it's all there. It's just too sweet and too sour somehow at the same time. Uh, this hurts my teeth too much to drink, but the flavor's there. I just don't know how we're really gonna get that to work. It's kind of one of the difficulties with kombucha because you don't always want that sour note there. And if you don't have anything there to cover it up except for sugar, uh, your hands are a bit tied. I think it works a lot better when you're trying for a flavor where it makes sense to have some sourness. The strawberry pop tart was a little too sweet, but it at least wasn't confusing when there was that burst of tartness there. Here I feel like I would have needed to dial the sugar down a lot, but that would allow more of the sourness to shine through. Uh, and I don't think that's really the direction I would want to go either. But it's good to know that these worked really, really well. They a thousand percent better than I ever would have guessed. Every aspect and note of that Pop-Tart flavor came through perfectly on both. And I don't know if anyone would have expected that. But if you'll remember, the point of this wasn't to have a Pop-Tart kombucha. The point was to see if this would work for other pastries. And I think what would make the most sense is to go with something that you would expect a little tartness. Like a lemon cake, a key lime pie, cherry pie, a peach crumble. Something where there's some inherent sourness, so it works together a little bit more smoothly. Let me know if you have any other ideas, though. This is Rex Pooch.